All right. So, um, as I said, I'm finally um, going out there and talking about something that many in Silicon Valley think is probably evil, uh, which is theology and religion, which was actually my first um, doctorate, um, my well, first postgraduate degrees, to, to be honest, um, although I have uh, many qualifications in other areas of uh, math and com computer science, my first degree was um, discrete mathematics back actually in the 80s, which doesn't say much for my age. But um, uh, so I had um, an interest in this area. Um, I went to a Catholic uh, school and, and ended up developing very different ideas to um, those who probably wanted to see me be something different in the Catholic Church when I was there. Um, uh, I had um, individuals who I had um, long-term relationships with in, in the Catholic Church, including um, some people who are now actually in the Vatican. So um, won't go into that too much, but anyway. So we're going to um, discuss sort of chapter by chapter my, um, my thesis and my doctoral dissertation. Um, which has a lot of areas in philosophy as well as the um, uh, the concepts of, uh, of of theology. They are interconnected, and um, in my sort of endeavour, what I did was I, I focused on the um, uh, the mythology and the theology behind Eve. So we're going to start with that, and it actually goes back into other stories. So we'll find a lot of interconnectivity between different theological aspects of of, of um, sort of society and and um, and uh, the birth of of religion in uh, like the middle east and then as it moved out uh, why because well there was a lot of connectivity between each of these areas and even if we look at things like the beginning of islam um, when uh, Muhammad was going into Medina, then the early Abrahamic religions um, already had uh, the concept of Allah, but uh, and many people don't realize that it wasn't introduced by um, Muhammad himself. They were Abraham, um, etc. Um, the distinction was that they had added a number of uh, other religions in, like Allah was the the over god, uh, but it, it had made a system where there were other uh, deities. So in this explanation of, of all that, we also see people who traded and shared and um, really developed um, a combination of theology and spiritualism um, beyond the sort of individual area. So if we look at this, the story of creation is um, overlapping between um, many ancient religions, including that of Babylonian uh, sort of aspects, uh, which, of course, if we remember, the, um, uh, the Jews had a time in captivity in Babylon. And while all these groups were interacting, they, they shared and developed their own mythologies. Um, interestingly enough, uh, which is completely different, the early Chinese mythologies also have a flood mythology. Um, some of these things are probably also explanations for changes that happened um, to the earth. If we go back more than 11,000 years with the um, Ice Age ending, um, well, not really, but partially, then we see the radical, drastic change in um, um, how the earth was actually formed. We see sea levels changing. Um, we see areas that were once um, joined as land now being covered by water. This is areas in, like the Black Sea changing, the opening um, up and flooding of um, uh, the Mediterranean, the division of Britain from the mainland. All of these things um, sort of link into what we now see as a flood story. So going through all of this, um, we have the integration of pagan religions with many gods, 
but still many of these have an over god. Um, even when we look at um, Indian uh, Vedric uh, belief, we have the concept of Brahma or an over god, and uh, many uh, within um, India believe that Brahma is a single god who is expressed in many forms. So when people say that they're they're believing the five million, sorry, billion or whatever it is, gods in in the Indian pantheon, what some would argue is that there's a single god, but they people understand and express it differently. So if we can imagine now, it's the spiritual, the aspect of what is more in this universe, the questioning aspect that we have, and some of us now. In, especially those in Silicon Valley, want to replace the concept of God as we see it with a secular God. And this really still forms God, but it's a different concept in that um, if we make a computer in the universe and a holographic image, well, uh, into something that we effectively worship, whether we say we are or not, then we're still capturing the spiritual, but now we're trying to have an afterlife in the virtual. So um, I even don't think that goes into any difference. So let's get into this properly. So we're going to go over the, the first part of my, um, my thesis, the introduction. Um, in, in this, I uh, covered uh, the creation, Prometheus, um, Epimetheus, uh, Pandora Eve, uh, some of the humanist values and the concept of Eve and consciousness and the psychological development of humanity. Um, part of um, why I, I didn't go into sharing this is um, in the past, um, there were some people who knew about my thesis and um, they set up things like Project Prometheus around me and all this other sort of fun stuff. Um, I'm not sure even how much they understood of it, but anyway. So creation. Um, the first part is, what do we consider a day? So in the day of God, what is time? What is creation? And even if we have the, um, the origin created this way, how do we actually put it there and, and where do we have it? Um, in Greco-Roman terms, we have a series of creations. So it's more aligned with what we will see in um, Vedric religions, um, those of the East, where we see a constant rebirth and recreation uh, from the gold to the silver to the iron and bronze as we degrade into something less. Personally, um, I don't see it being degraded, but um, anyway. So the origin of creation there is how we end up with man. And um, there are different even uh, aspects to like the, the part we will talk about with Eve later, or uh, rather um, Pandora, Pandora being the Greco-Roman equivalent to Eve, the first woman. And um, in each of the gold and silver times, uh, there were no no females, so to speak. So not quite sure how it would have actually worked out, but the LBGTQ, whatever plus communities would have loved it because there weren't any genders. There were just one of us. Uh, and in Platonic um, ideals, then we had the concept of um, someone too powerful that, that had to be split by Zeus because we had four arms and four legs and, um, I'm not quite sure how that would work as, as humans either, sort of centaurs with extra arms or something. So in creating this, the pagan mythology doesn't have the main pantheons as God, uh, of gods actually creating the universe. So the model for a Greco-Roman religion is actually in Gaia. And um, Gaia, uh, or Gaia, as we like to say now, but Gaia um, is really uh, taking a sort of female god, goddess type um, birth, which is analogous to Tiamat and the 
Babylonian chaos deities. Um, nice always how um, um, female um, sort of deities end up being chaotic. Um, but then take these and develop them into like the birth of a primal universe. That then gives birth to the Titans. And the Titans, of course, um, we, if you know your, your Greco-Roman history, we have the not only Prometheus and Ephemaeus, uh, but the more powerful Titans, like um, the ones that were captured and bound by Zeus, Atlas, who had to hold the weight of the universe, um, and but even more Saturn, the, the concept of uh, time and uh, with Kronos, the aging of the universe, of course, by time. So this spiritual force that we have here um, then is bound by the gods who come along later, funny enough, uh, and grab this. So um, it also can be seen in some aspects of the um, the early Tao, the, the Taoist um, religion. And um, um, we can see that in, in other aspects of Christian mythology as well. So um, one of the really good things I did get out of all of this uh, was I learned the method of, of Loki. So for those who don't know it, it's um, uh, the creation of a memory palace. So uh, the memory palace method uh, is really a methodology of um, putting things in familiar places so that you you remember them. It's a way of teaching yourself how to increase your memory if you want to. Uh, so you build like a place with rooms and you have familiar locations and you go back there and you populate shelves and other such things with things you've read. Um, it, it's... Um, how many people in the past used to um, learn how to memorize texts and other such things. And, and some people still do in, in um, some of the cultures that are still more, uh, I guess, um, verbal. And even some of the Islamic um, Arabic cultures still re retain this. So it, um, we have now the birth of the universe that it, it comes into the separation of um, of different aspects in Genesis. This is um, uh, not covered in any great detail. The Kabbalic areas of Judaic religion um, went much further, um, and some of the Gnostic areas of Christianity do as well. But it's um, well and truly. Um, endowed in each of the pagan religions. So we have the concept of um, um, well, creation populating everything and then things being made. So Zeus did make and did create, but he didn't create everything. He, he made um, um, the first woman, um, he made man, um, but not the first man, ironically. So he made man of iron, uh, us where we had to sort of delve and 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 work and um, Yahweh on the other hand uh, Jehovah uh, Israel uh, etc etc many of the other names then we're looking at something that well is very different so we have a larger singular deity in the Abrahamic now the cross-pollination of these stories is, is always important. Um, the sharing of ideas, basically this is where the, the, the nature of my, my thesis came from, the sort of the roots of that and the, the gnarled intertwined ideas of uh, different aspects of society and culture. And if we look through some of this, it then really seeds others later and some of the ideas also um, interject into each other. So a little bit earlier, we had uh, Joel talking about um, a certain author, Mr. Pratchett. And Pratchett also uh, explored some of this, um, which is part of why I actually liked his books. The 
concept there of gods, etc., was um, in a, quite a number of of uh, books and works by by Pratchett, and um, the whole nature of creation was there as well. So um, Zeus um, was very different, as I said. But let's get into Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus and his brother uh, were behind some of the creation. Um, now, the interesting aspect of Prometheus is that he's really known as forethought. So Prometheus is um, one of the major titans, but he sides not with the other titans, um, like not with the existing ones, but with um, the gods, the younger sort of progeny of the titans. And when, when we talk about forethought, we're talking about uh, someone who knows everything. So Prometheus is basically omnipotent, um, but not necessarily omniscient uh, in all ways. But imagine now you know everything that's going to ever happen in the universe and can predict it. And this is a, a critical aspect that people don't think about when they think about um, um, the well, incredibly long time that Prometheus was tied to a rock and forced to have his liver eaten out day after day after day before being rescued finally by Hercules. Well, one, he knew he was going to be rescued, but aeons, uh, eons of, of suffering and knowing that your choice would lead to that, would you still do it? So... Um, Prometheus um, traveled to Olympia, heaven, etc., cetera, um, and lit the torch of the chariot of the sun. So uh, that little uh, chariot there that caused a whole lot of problems to people who got too close and other such things. There are lots of Greek stories about that chariot. Uh, Prometheus went up there and uh, Minerva traveled up and, and lit and created a torch that he brought back and um, gave to man. So there are various pre-Hesperod and post-Hesperod different aspects of the gifts that were given to humanity. Um, but if we think about it for a moment, what we have here is someone disobeying, um, well, Zeus and choosing to give humanity knowledge. and when we talk about this, it's really allegorical in a way as well. So the concept of the torch is actually more really into the same as we see in the apple, which is knowledge. It is a wealth of wisdom and understanding. So um, with the aid of his brother, he um, sort of, changed humanity from an animal to something more. And this is part of the argument that I make through my thesis that um, it was the choice of the apple that um, made Eve and Adam then become more. Now, thinking beyond that, we have um, Yahweh, God, who is both omnipotent and omniscient. And if you think about that for a moment, we have an individual who knows every possibility. And then we have the idea that, oh, well, he left free will there, not knowing. But we have free will, but my argument is also that it was planned. Um, at, some at some stage, we had to actually do something that we were forbidden to do to get punished and become more. We had to actually go down and labor and work and, and uh, well, push ourselves beyond that, we, that which we were meant to do. So um, the creation of, of humanity was, was seen um, as others like um, Ephemetheus handed out teeth, shells, claws, everything for the animals and uh, well us humans had nothing all we got left with was fire 
and fire represents knowledge and intelligence and the way that we can then build and create and well take ourselves beyond anything else we become the apex predator not because of a position where we are um well have better claws or better teeth or that we're stronger we make ourselves the noble animal really because of our ability to think so imagine again prometheus knew in these stories not only a thousand years imagine knowing everything that's ever going to happen any time for the next million years um, it would certainly make doing examinations really easy um, just look into your future and go oh i remember learning that in the future but anyway so um it's um, also very different to milton i've written about um um uh, milton and and his take on on paradise and uh the re recovery of that but um for those who are interested blake also uh has some very interesting reflections on paradise um he takes the the story milton created and changes it making satan sort of well um less of a devil so to speak um more something else but i won't go into any of that until later when we get to it all right so um erasmus is also a very interesting um author on this topic but um again not going to go into that here so uh epimetheus was resolute um handed out everything in order um yeah prometheus uh, then basically went hey i'm going to make these guys superior and um, that managed to piss off zeus the only way to put it so not only was he better than anything but um, um it really grabbed him into the forefront and separated it totally so mm, yep uh anyway so going forward uh we create something along the lines of um an expulsion from paradise that takes us into the iron age where we have to work and many of us think that's a punishment but i actually don't see that the same way then again i'm a workaholic uh so i mean i only finished doing um, some study and things like that um, uh, before this, five minutes before this course. So, uh, and I've been up since six and I'll do it the rest of the week. So to me, this is probably not bad, but fire, as I said, um, represents more and it comes, oops, go back, there, there we go. Uh, it represents the, ideal of what trade commerce and knowledge are there to do it's it's something beyond weapons it is the concept of us as a race of individuals that choose to trade and interact so um, that is how we really get our freedom at the same time so the argument many see is that um pandora was um sort of wicked and let everything out but that's not always how it started um the original story uh history odd changed this uh was actually very different so there are there are sort of two really disparate and paradoxical lines of of um, greco-roman myth where um, the box is either filled with noxious articles which was later or where it was filled with all of gifts to humanity either way it doesn't really um, put pandora in a good light because either she opens this up uh, letting everything escape and only keeping hope or um she lets all the bad stuff out only keeping hope which is 
interesting when you think about it. If you start thinking about this, in both the good and the bad versions, we're left with hope. So when we're being punished, we have hope. And when we're being rewarded, we have hope. So it's a, um, a double-edged sort of concept, that one. So um, what we do find, though, is no matter what happens, no amount of ills, no amount of problems allow us to be completely wretched as humanity. We always, we always can fight for more. And um, all the, the good, the bad, or whatever else may have escaped, we as humans always, if we grab onto hope, we have some way of, of imagining something more that we can work for. Um, other authors, um, including Erasmus, have made arguments uh, that this was really a way of entrapping us um, like a drug that hope enables us to keep working and, and striving even when there is no real hope and that we are you know, basically bound into a form of, of slavery into this world where we're punished. But then, um, like many other early humanist scholars, Erasmus um, was well, trying to find a way of being secular without avoiding the church. Now, the creation of why we have Pandora's box is it, as a marriage gift. It's, it's Adam um, or um, the first man in the Greco-Roman pantheon and, uh, and Eve were, were bound with this gift. So um, whether we see it as a, a punishment or not, um, I, I find it hard to understand that if it's a punishment like later uh, Hesperia had introduced, that why would it be given that way? Um, so, um, hmm, I mean, I, one of the problems with each of these stories, um, including some of the analyses of Eve, is that none of them have been taken as representing a strong support of woman. Neither sort of pantheon, uh, whether we're talking about Christianity or you know, the Judaic and that of um, Greco-Roman, represent Eve as equal. Yet, in some ways, you've got to consider that she is different but equal. Um, Thomas Aquinas actually documented that very well. But um, if we think for a moment, it's not Adam that took the apple. And we can have the typical early medieval um, sort of scholastic outside of some of the uh, deeper thinkers like um, Aquinas idea that that means woman bad, but equally, well, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be human without this choice. So Adam also chooses. So popping it all onto Eve, well, seems a little bit of problem. Well, it might be a state of abundance, it might be something more, but equally, if we think about the move from tribal existence into the move to a humanity as a uh, not not just hunter gatherer but creating and farming and building and starting to make society then that is the change from abundance into a wilderness of fawns and hardship it's really the loss of innocence that we see there it's not just death um, and labor but it is then the promise of resurrection. So that, that's the other aspect of this that people don't think about. And when we're thinking through this, um, the story is, is well going to continue to grow when we think that um, God must have known where this would go. If you're omnipotent, then 
you know, you understand, you see. And not only do you see that Eve would take the apple and Adam would eat from it later, but you also see the birth of the um, sort of promise of resurrection, the ability to then come back, the move into something more. So so we now move into Eve. There we have her and, and the snake. Um, poor old Satan there. Uh, if you read uh, Milton, you see that each time Satan tried to do something, he became less and, until he had to crawl upon his belly. Um, he tried to escape and get through different areas. And as he went through the different layers of the heavens, he had to basically relinquish some of his powers and skills to, to get where he was. But equally, um, it would have been known what he would become as well. So Eve, of course, we have uh, really a psychological concept of hardship here. We have um, the move into something more, but equally something less. As a person who studies all the time, um, I'm, for the metaphorical move away from uh, I guess a hunter-gatherer life, uh, lifespan into um, some crazy bugger who can then have books all over the place and read all the time is a good thing. So we don't have a lot in the Bible. Uh, Genesis 1 to 3 goes into the creation story. It um, puts in a few metaphors. It goes through, um, tells verse. And um, if you actually analyze it, you can see that there are really a different captured story, like different stories captured simultaneously and merged. Um, it isn't always coherent. Many of these stories aren't because as you write and you change, they in themselves grow. Um, but it really matches with um, some of the earlier Babylonian um, and the uh, Dispara uh, integrates the core of what well, becomes the Hebrew identity. So like some of the other stories, we see a myth of beginning and we see the change, like with Pandora, from um, Athenian woe and the cause of suffering um, into something else. As we, we analyze this further, we can actually see that it wasn't just someone to blame, that um, the end, the loss of innocence is something we all must do. It, it is how we move from childhood into being an adult. Um, and it equally is how we move, well, from tribal society to city-states to something more, how we develop government, how we start to develop trade. Remembering, as I said earlier, the concept of coin and trade is intimately tied with the concept of fire. So we develop um, a reference to a well capturing of society and culture. So um, we see much more of this as well in um, uh, enlightenment ideas and many of the concepts we now take for granted are very different from from that we would probably understand um, in the early or mid medieval and definitely very different from those of early christian religions uh and even if we go further back we we look at uh, cato and cicero in the greco-roman then the ideas that we developed in the uh, 18th century the 1700s to 1800s uh, really captured civic humanism in a way that changed our understanding of humanity and in integrating um, the sort of concepts of um, Christianity into the civic we then move into well rejecting many ideas and um, 
interestingly, um, just been I've well, just finished reading a book by Niall, uh, Nigel Bigger, uh, Oxford scholar on ethics, uh, who wrote something on colonialism, and very good book. But if you think about this era, um, which um, of course, I wrote this way before he wrote uh, that. It's a change in in how we believe and understand. And um, this era, the Enlightenment, then integrated a nature of humanity that, well, then rejected slavery for the first time in history. Um, there are individuals who who may not have wanted slaves, but um, it was that Enlightenment value. Uh, that then took that through the world. So qualifications of citizenship developed, um, people developed, and um, um, as it says there, um, Adam now needs labor, but of course, um, so does Eve. And this is what is really forgotten. And Adam made his own choice as well in this. The, uh, the, the, concept here takes it into something much more if we think about it now the act of what they were doing in the garden really didn't have one of possessions it didn't have one of ownership it didn't it didn't go into stewardship it didn't have anything to develop if you think of perfection there's nothing to develop of yourself you are so the landed estate, God's, God's home, so to speak, in paradise, um, well, you didn't do anything. It, it, I mean, I, I find it, uh, I know people look at that and they, they see, um, um, wow, wouldn't that be great? I actually find it horrific, to tell you the truth. Um, this idea that we can uh, pass away um, I see the the concept of the um, the Eloi um, in like um, sort of a future society with nothing but being food. So anyway, uh, for those who like time traveler stories from quite some time ago. Um, anyway, Numinous values, they were introduced. Um, as I mentioned, the English aristocracy uh, started having a completely different concept of the neoclassical. Oops. Um, these concepts changed how we saw the world. Um, we moved away from like, um, like, uh, what we saw as barrenness, but now we, we start understanding that maybe labor is actually good for us. This really started to develop with the birth of Protestant um, sort of concepts, but the idea that maybe our works are what make us great. Um, we see this in some of the art at the time, the judgment of Hercules by um, uh, Gribelin, um, amazing piece of art if you you see it um what we we now have is um we choose to well work our way through different aspects of of um, sort of birth rebirth society and for those who've actually gone through the um, mythology of hercules you also find that um he dies and becomes a demigod in a rather painful, abhorrent way uh, after sort of um, completing everything. He is then tricked into putting on a skin that is uh, infused with a, um, a potion that um, basically makes him burn. And um, he, well, gets consumed in fire uh, before going to... Um, um, become a demigod and rising himself into something more. Now, the integration of the story also goes into um, uh, sort of the integration of a reconceptualized idea of stoic values, the English moral sensibilities of the time on how we could you know, sort of help 
the world, really um, grabs some of the humanistic ideas that developed out of Italy and takes them into something new. The, the works of Hume and others then um, integrate um, this idea of what we as humans can become. And others like Milton uh, integrate Pandora and Eve, but look at um, a difference in, in Eve with a God that is no longer capricious. So um, it's God is, um, I, I guess, magisterial there, more not as we would say a magistrate in, in courts today, but the Roman idea. So um, the other aspects of sexuality um, throughout the, the early um, stories in each case, you, you find um, sexuality exists. Um, it would have happened within the garden, but the distinction is now we understand that what we are. And um, at first, Adam and Eve are ashamed, but they have more children. So obviously they get over it. I mean, we also develop the idea of well, communicating with each other. We form um, ways of arguing that don't involve killing each other. We in England, for instance, have a parliament and the same thing is happening between Adam and Eve or um, the other aspects of, of each of these religions. So Adam basically doesn't lie in what he's doing. He informs God of his decision, um, says, this is, um, I made this choice. Um, for those who want to read the Kabbal, uh, Kabbalah, um, Lilith, of course, has been represented in many horror movies, but um, uh, there's uh, early Jewish mysticism around um, Lilith being the first woman. Um, and then, of course, Eve being a replacement because Adam wasn't terribly happy with Lilith for whatever reason. Um, that would explain why we got an even, even number of ribs. There you go. So um, Adam knowingly turns away from pleasure. Now, if you think about the Kabbalic version of this, then Adam's already um, got rid of one wife and he's going, oh, bugger it, I'm going to keep the second one. Uh, even if I have to leave this eternal life of bliss and, and, um, and more. But equally, it changes from one of solitude. I mean, um, maybe he was an Aspie like me. He probably could have got around and, and enjoyed the garden with, with just a little bit of company. But um, um, most people probably um, feel more. Um, equally, we already covered this in one of our earlier lessons. And if we remember that we went over um, and we covered Socrates, uh, when Plato talked about the choice that Socrates made to actually embrace the law that he loved and the city he loved and not leave. He didn't flee and he, he faced his punishment either way. So um, interesting uh, aspect of Milton for those who haven't read um, uh, Milton in detail. Uh, it will take you a while if you do. If you want to read it properly, it, it's best to read a bit and stop and read a bit and stop. And uh, Milton is difficult. I mean, it, it's an interesting read, but if you really want to understand it, it, it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, but Milton uh, has really, like many of the people at the, the time in, in like the Enlightenment um, English era, embraced a combination of the Greco-Roman, and he has really merged many aspects of Eve and Pandora. So, um, I mean, I don't know if that's good or bad, but um, it misses some of the capriciousness. Um, so, little quote, um, Eve, uh, more lovely than Pandora, whom the gods endowed with all the gifts, and oh, 
to like in sad event when the unwiser son of Jupiter brought by Hermes should instead mankind with a fan looks to be avenged on him who stole Jove's authentic fire. Either way, we see Eva Pandora cursed. So, I mean, it, it's interesting how um, both can be brought together. It's a time when um, people had started to re invigorate themselves on the classics. Um, the classics go through cycles. Uh, they get forgotten, they get brought back. Um, Aristotle became very popular for a time. Um, then um, there was a rebirth of um, like Plutarch and others around the time when Shakespeare started writing his plays. Um, that became boring again and everyone rejected it. And then we came back to the concept of going back and understanding the Greco-Roman uh, religion and, and wisdom and integrating some of the ideas of the philosophy. Uh, we'll see what happens again this time, whether we reject it more or we the world rebirths and grab some of it. Anyway, continuing, um, we get into Genesis. Genesis, uh, we have the uh, birth, in my opinion, of the tribal groups, the development of this tribal society, um, even up to like 150, um, even over 100 years ago, um, we have many of these tribal sort of communities still in the Arab Peninsula. The story is a male god. Um, whether um, that is popular anymore, I see there are debates in the Church of England. Um, but all of this has a male god um, telling the universe to exist and forming a structure, which is very different to some of the pagan religions. As I said, the pagan um, ideas have a female god who, well, basically births um, everything. And then, um, well, we have um, Adam having a, um, a rib taken. Um, uh, if Lilith's there, of course, then he has two, so nice and even. The um, life of Eve is very scant. If you actually go through Genesis, you, you find very little of um, communication about Eve other than uh, a few, well, mentions here and there. Uh, Paul barely touches Eve. Um, in the letters like 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and 1 Timothy, but that's about it. Um, so my argument goes back to without the fall, God's purpose cannot be fulfilled. So this was all structured so that it had to happen. If we don't fall, we don't grab the fire of Prometheus, and we don't get trade and knowledge and wisdom and rationality, and we stay animals, then what are we? So in this, Eve's role as wife, mother, companion, and helper would never be brought to fruition. And her existence goes beyond just Adam's helper and fellow steward. If you think about it for a moment, if God's purpose is to have a populated earth, uh, one where we are, knowledgeable and wise and stewards of existence, then Eve's actions can't be considered a sin. I mean, they might be something that is forbidden, but they are equally the creation of all humanity. It is um, something that people don't think about, but it means that the choice of the woman in the society is one that takes humanity beyond just the animal, the ape-like, the bestial, and enlightens mankind as well. I mean, as in um, not just a female choice, but male becomes something more. In striving this way, we get more than just the idea of hunt, fight, and now we can build, we can create. So um, Adam 
um, names Eve. She um, isn't originally called Eve. Um, Eve represents mother of all living uh, from Genesis 3.20. Uh, so Eve is now ascending into the role of progenitor and her role is that of managing sort of the existence of the entire human race and birthing all that will happen in the Bible. Um, like I said, with the New Testament, there's very little mentioned by others, Solomon or Moses, um, you know, very, very sparse account of everything. So um, the later discussion of the Bible um, if bypasses everything very much. Um, this equally is very different in a way to Pandora. Um, so the role of humanity is already set upon a path and um, the um, sort of integration in the Pandora mythology of androgynous progenitors who form individuals of both sexes and then are created and split into man and woman uh, is analogous to splitting Adam into man and woman, but it doesn't have the same feel of a female taking us out of ape-like animalistic society and developing into something rational and whole and human. So this idea then transforms humanity into well something more. It's the development of, well, us as a rational being. So as I've mentioned Aquinas already, um, Whatever man desires, he desires it under the aspect of good. Um, not always the case, but um, generally how it works. Uh, we, we don't all understand. We have different ideas um, and we disagree. But now we have means of arguing and forming concepts. And we have a means of taking it beyond just good and evil and into something more. So the poetic rendition of the fall by Milton, um, we see Eve seduced into um, a decision that would have been known by God. There was an angel. We have the gates of paradise always protected, but yet, Satan comes and, well, Michael just happens to have gone off for a walk. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, if you, you consider it for a moment, uh, all-knowing, all-wise God has just gone, hey, Michael, um, can you just go and do a small errand for me? I know you're protecting um, uh, paradise, but yeah, yeah just, just go over there. Oh, don't worry about it. She'll be right. It doesn't seem right to me. So um, we then create something more, um, more than sort of the concept of Venus, more than the capturing of the fine arts, but the feminization of humanity introduces, well, commerce and much more. So the Titans continue to battle, but we don't. We can we can do far more. So. Our difference in gender doesn't mean that we're different in people. It just means we have different roles. And um, the idea here has developed uh, through time with different aspects of labor. Of course, uh, uh, contrary to the woke movement, men can't have periods and thus can't have babies. Um, I'm sure that some people will argue with me, but last I checked, um, apart from silly movies involving um, um, actors who fake pregnancies, um, men don't get pregnant. So we have toil, we have work, but with purpose. And in this, we become more. We gain knowledge, we gain strength, and we, we learn to be more than we were. So that decision 
is really what sparked the rational in us. We develop into something more by making a choice. And um, in my concept here, um, it's very different from Pandora as a, a quasi-deity um, and a mothership cult. Uh, it's it's not the fall from an endogenous uh, androgynous state into split gender that we want to try and merge, but the ideal of each of us as a whole. So into awareness and knowledge out of just bliss. So yes, we could just sit there and we can take LSD and we can argue that, hey, we feel great. But is that our purpose? And if neither Adam or Eve left paradise, well, would the goal of the earth, um, the, the state of, of society ever be fulfilled? So from a theological point of view, um, uh, I, I see the unsophisticated concept of um, uh, Genesis as something ambiguous and contradictory being well, less problematic. The other aspects here are um, beyond blaming Eve for the fall, we end up with a balance of male and female sexuality that is a source of power and um, something different between the, the gender roles that is able to strengthen each of them. Um, I can say from my, my own sort of existence, um, there are aspects of my life and um, that are isolated that my wife um, definitively fills in. She can't do some things I can. I can't do many things she can. So as a, uh, a couple, as partners, um, we become something more. So um, I'm going back to this concept of the idea of knowledge here was intended. So it is not just hope, but an understanding and um, the introduction of uh, much more. So in some Gnostic aspects of the, um, of the New Testament, um, Thomas, etc., cetera, um, uh, we see Mary Magdalene represented as a second Eve. Many people don't like this concept. Um, there's very little um, done on Jesus or anything like this about his sexuality. So no one likes to talk about that. Um, everyone likes to think that he doesn't have one, but that doesn't mean he didn't. Uh, it really forms the foundation of who we are, in my opinion. So uh, as we, we start looking into where we go, then Eve, well, Eve can be looked at as the classic bad girl. Then maybe she has abandoned herself um, and her husband and forced them into some doom of toil um, and outside of salvation. Yet, really, we have 8 billion of us right now. We have a world that is growing in knowledge. We have art. We have society. We have literature. And in all of this, we have a structure that would not have existed uh, without it. And so um, in some ways, I think it's uh, really about challenging ourselves building and growing. How do we actually, are we still on? Um, yeah, we're still on. Yeah, I don't know what Zoom does, but it gave me an error saying that it quit, but it doesn't seem to have quit. So anyway, um, as I was saying, um, now we can stop sharing, but um, yeah. So what we're we're looking at, in my opinion, is different views of theology. And if we take it to a deeper level and we analyze it from a rational point of view, rather than having the um, early concepts that were based on sort of integrating some of the Stoic Roman ideas, uh, we can have more of a sort of deep understanding that, well, maybe this was actually planned. Maybe um, we're meant to grow and become 
more rational and and think and develop and um, create more out of our society and, and humanity than well just blaming each other so that's chapter one <laughs>